In this question, we're comparing calcium and beryllium to figure out which is going to be more reactive. So we're going to start out by looking at this the same way we have with all other, other periodic trends. We're going to be looking for an element in the periodic table and finding its group and period. So first let's find calcium. Here it is. And beryllium. There's beryllium. And we can see both beryllium and calcium are in group 2, but beryllium is in period 2 and calcium is in period 4. So we can use this to fill in our table. The number of energy levels is given by the number of periods. So beryllium is going to have 2 energy levels because it's in period 2. Calcium is going to have 4 energy levels because it's in period 4. As for the effective nuclear charge, that's given by the group and the group number here is 2 for both beryllium and calcium. So we have an effective nuclear charge of 2 for both of those elements. Okay, next, same as before, we need to figure out which experiences a greater Coulombic force of attraction. So the equation for Coulomb's law, F is proportional to the charge of one thing times the charge of the other thing divided by the distance between them squared. So the number of energy levels, that is the R in our equation, the distance between the valence electrons and the nucleus. We can see that calcium has a much greater number of energy levels and therefore a greater distance from the valence electrons to the nucleus. And so since radius or the distance is on the bottom of this fraction, as that increases, the overall fraction is going to decrease and our force is going to decrease. So because of that, calcium is going to have a weaker force of attraction and beryllium is going to have a stronger force of attraction. They both have the same nuclear charge of 2, the effective nuclear charge, which is our Q1, and Q2 is just the charge of an electron, which is the same every time. So that's not going to affect it. So because of that difference in the number of energy levels or the distance between the nucleus and the outer electrons, we know that beryllium is going to have a stronger force of attraction since its electrons, its valence electrons, are closer to the nucleus. So beryllium experiences the greatest Coulombic force of attraction. Okay, next we need to think, do these elements need to gain or lose electrons to form ions when they satisfy the octet rule? So beryllium and calcium are both metals. They both have two valence electrons since they're in group two. And so when they form an ion, they're going to be losing these electrons in order to form an ion. So they need to lose electrons to form an ion. So because of this, which element is going to be the most reactive? So we know that beryllium has the strongest force of attraction to its outer electrons, and we know they need to lose electrons to perform an ion. So we want the element that has the weakest force of attraction, as that will be the easiest to lose electrons from. And calcium has the weakest force of attraction. So calcium is going to be able to lose electrons more easily and therefore is going to be more reactive. In this question, we're now going to compare phosphorus and chlorine in the same way. So first, let's find them in our periodic table. Phosphorus is here and chlorine is here. So we can see both phosphorus and chlorine are in period 3. But phosphorus is in group 15 and chlorine is in group 17. So now let's fill out our table. The number of energy levels is given by the period. Both are in the same period. They're both in period 3. The effective nuclear charge is given by the group. Phosphorus is in group 15, so it has an effective nuclear charge of 5. Chlorine is in group 17, so it has an effective nuclear charge of 7. So the first question asks us to figure out which has a greater Coulombic force of attraction between the electrons, the valence electrons, that is, and the nucleus. And according to our equation, the charge is on top of our fraction. And chlorine has a greater effective nuclear charge. Since it has a greater effective nuclear charge, which is on top of our fraction, the overall fraction is going to be bigger and the force is going to be bigger for chlorine. The number of energy levels, that tells us the distance, the R, between the nucleus and the valence electrons, that's going to be the same for both since they have the same number of energy levels. As a result of this, chlorine is going to have the strongest force of attraction because it has a greater effective nuclear charge. So chlorine is going to have the strongest 
attraction between the nucleus and the valence electrons. The next question asks, do these elements need to gain or lose electrons to satisfy the octet rule? Chlorine and phosphorus are both non-metals. They have five and seven electrons in their valence shell respectively. And so they're going to need to gain electrons in order to have a full outer shell. So since these elements need to gain electrons, the element that experiences a greater force from its nucleus to its valence electrons is going to be able to gain electrons more easily and therefore is going to be more reactive. So since chlorine has a stronger force between the nucleus and the valence electrons, chlorine is going to be able to gain electrons more easily and so chlorine is going to be more reactive.